In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a button effect in a donut chart here. And as you can see here, it means will change based on our interaction. So to do this, what we're going to do here, first of all, get the border template, which you can find here on chartgs3.com, getting started. Once you're on here, copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next, want to get the source codes, check out my Patreon page. And of course, join the Discord channel for any questions. All the links are in the description box. So let's car start to convert this into a donut chart. So we're going to say here, bar, we'll convert this into a donut chart, save, refresh. There we are. Let's remove this. Save, refresh. Let's narrow down this. We're going to say here, cut out. And then we're going to say here, 90 percentage. That makes it a more narrow. All right, so now we've got this. The next thing I want to do is I want to put some button here. Or not, it's not really a button, it's the effect of a button. But when we hover over this, it will trigger it and it will see or it will brighten the color. So what I'm going to do here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say here, here create a plugin or plugins. I'm going to give this name, let's say a button box. This here we're going to use Say constant equals ID, and then we can say here <laughs> the button box. Then we can say here before we draw the data sets, we will draw this. Before data sets, draw chart args plugin options. Then what I'm going to do here, constant, let's say here an object destructuring, and I'm going to say here CTX, and probably we'll be needing the data of this chart object. So now what I want to do here is I want in the very center, I would like to put this button or lookalike button design. So let's start to work on the button design. For this, I need to know what is the center of our chart area here. And luckily charges has something built in here. It has a built in functionality. We're going to say chart, get data set meta index zero. And then we say here the data. Let's save this, refresh, and see what we get. Our data, uh, get data set, sorry. So this is not data sets, but it's singular, not plural. So data set meta, there we are. Once we get that, we get this specific data set, index zero, and you can see here the X and Y is always the center of the arc or the, the circle. So this here is always the same because that's the distance where it's calculated from. So what I can say here, from data point zero, I want to get the X and what we can do here, just very simple, I'm going to say here, constant center or X center, X center equals this. And then we say here for the Y, Y center equals and adjust that to the Y. Once we have this, we can now start to draw our shape or button. So to do that, I'm going to say a ctx.save to save all variables above. And now let's start to work on the shape. I'm going to say begin path to create a shape that is independent of anything else. And make sure you do, of course, ctx because you're drawing in the canvas, That's basically reference to here. So then what I want to do here is, well, if we're going to make a a line around it let's do that one we're going to say ctx dot line width and let's give it a three pixels thickness then what i want to do here is the line color so we're going to say ctx dot stroke style and let's make this green for now then what i want to do here is to create the shape itself so it's a round rectangle which is a built in core uh, built in function that makes a rectangle with rounded edges. So what I can do here, I need here the X, the Y coordinates, then the width, the height, and then how many, uh, I guess, border radius here. So for this, I'll just say here, a border radius of 10. Let's put in here first the X and Y center, and after that we can fine tune this. And then the width, should be dependent on the text we want to have in here. For now, I'll just say here 100 and the height, I'll just make it 20 for now. Later on, we'll fine tune this. Then I'm going to say a ctx.stroke to draw the line. Save, refresh. 
So as you can see here, it is not in the center, but it starts from the center point here, and then it goes to the right side. Basically, that's it. So what I need to do is to first, if I want to move it more in the center, I need to know what is the width here. So what I can do here is this width, which should be the text, but what I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to say it constant width equals 100. Then what I can do here, that will be not only this, but I say here, uh, this is fine. But then what I want to do here is I want to deduct that by 50, the half of it. So it will be always in the center. So I'm going to say here, width divide by 2, we deduct that from the x center. Save. There we are. We can probably move this up as well based on the height. So we can say a constant height. Let's make this 20 for now. Put it in here. And then we're going to say here minus height divide by 2. Save. Refresh. All right. So now we have this here. Now is the question. What are we going to put in here? I'm just going to put in a basic text, but you can put in anything you want. I'll just say a high score or positive, negative. You could, you could imagine anything. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is let's start to create a text in the center and then we're going to fine tune it. So I'm going to say ctx, uh, let's say here, dot a font because I want to put now a text and the text will be, well, what I'm going to do is just for the sake of it, I'm going to put the text in here. So it's here button text. I want to connect to that and whatever the button text is here, I'll just say positive. So I want to extract this text here. And we are allowed to do that, of course, because this is this here is just a JavaScript object. So what I'm going to do here is the first thing is how many uh, do I want to have bold? Yes or no? If that's yes, then we put in here bold. Else we just remove that. Then I want to say here maybe 50 pixels. And then we're going to say a sans serif. So you can imagine already this here would be the height of our thing that we could change. So if we want to do that one or later on, then we can just soft code it, connect it all together. Then what I want to do here is I'll say here the fill style. The fill style defines the color of the text. I'll make this just solid black. Then what I want to do here is I want to put in the text based on our coordinates here because I want to put it in the center here. To do that, I'm going to say here, ctx.fill text. Then I say whatever the text would be and then the x and y coordinates. So we could basically get here the x and y center. And then you might want to do we need this or probably not because we can align the text in the center and do all kind of tricks. For this here, I want to make sure it will be eventually this positive. So let's save this first and then go here. All right, so this works, but now let's put it in center first. So we say here ctx of text align equals center. Then maybe ctx of text base line to do a vertical centering. So we say in the middle, say refresh. All right, that works quite nice. Now I want to connect this. So I'm going to grab the text here. I'm going to say, how do we get there? Well, basically from the data, it's going to give it here the path data dot data sets index zero. And then from the data set, we're just going to grab here button text, save, refresh, positive. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to measure this. So I'm going to use a trick here. Chart.js or the canvas has a built-in item that measures the width of the text. So what I'm going to do here, the width would be, and I'm going to say here, ctx measure the text that we want to use. And we say here dot width. When we do this, we will get the exact width of the text. And as you can see here, that looks beautiful, but this is not what I want because I would like to have some padding on the left and right side. So let's say here plus 20. So we have 10 pixels of padding on the left side, 10 pixels on the right side. There we are. Now, what about the height? We could do here basically measure text height. We could do that one. I guess we can just do that one or else I'll just say here font size. If you do this, and I do see here one thing that we probably have to consider is the following. We have here this, this should be moved up 
so it will understand that we have this layout setting. Because if we are putting this here calculated without this, it is not really considering the font size, the font type, or the font family, and the boldness. So what I want to do is I want to move this up before we measure the width of it. And probably you might see a slight adjustment. I guess nothing at all, so I will accept that. All right, that's fair. Then what I want to do is here, what about our height? So we can say here, maybe just move this one down. No, we will have to keep that one there, but the height, we could just do the following. Um, I guess we can say here the height, if we put it up, I want to change this. I want to hit back tick, back tick, so we have template literals. So your dollar sign, and we're going to put in here the height of the item, and then we can say here 50. By doing that, we save this, refresh, there we are, that looks quite nice. We could even make the border radius here a bit more stronger by saying 50 as well. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there we are, that looks quite decent. And then if we would want to make the height even higher, because it, we want to have some padding top and bottom like that. Oh, that is not like this, sorry. We have to do it here, maybe here plus 20 pixels. Mm, not really, I'm not convinced on that one. All right, I'll leave that as it is. So, so far we have this here. I'll just leave that one. That looks probably a bit more better. Uh, and probably because of it will calculate here. It's all together and the font size is related. Anyway, we have this now. I think we have now one part ready. What I want to do is I want to have a background color. And the background color will be here light green. And I'll just get a light green color here i'll just grab this color here's the green that's the stroke style all right or the bluish or whatever that is then i want to have the inner i want to fill it so i'm going to say here ctx dot fill and then we need to make sure that the fill is the background color we're going to say here fill style and this will be 0 0.2 save refresh all right so now we have this but i want to make sure when we hover on our chart area or the chart this will change in color so to do this i need to use here what we call a hoisting so i'm going to say your color and what is hoisting hoisting is just like when you have a flag when you put the uh, pull the wire of the flag, the flag will hoist up or going up. That is what we call hoisting. So basically, I'm going to give it a value which I will assign somewhere here down, but it will be hoisted to the very top and then it will recognize everywhere else. That is quite useful for us because right now it doesn't know what color we have. However, I'm going to use a trick for that that it will readjust itself and then it will read which color it will be, even though we define it elsewhere almost at the bottom. All right, so what I'm going to do is we have here this before data sets draw. I'll say here comma. And then uh, for the color, I guess we can say here the following. I'm going to grab this color. And this color will be specifically for the background color. So I'll say here the color will be, well, what is exactly the color? It will be either color that we have assigned. And if we did not assign a color, I'm go, going to extract a default color, which is in this case, this item here so what will happen is this will be now color if i save this refresh nothing really happens here all right however we're going to use this now so here now what i want to do is i want to create an after event so after the event i want to do something so i'm going to say after event and then what i'm going to do here is the following i'm going to say chart arcs any plugin options i think there's even no plugin options here i think it's only these two but I'll leave it like that so then what i want to do is first of all i want to make sure you understand the arcs so if i save this refresh and then we move over here look at this we're getting the event it will understand the type of event we do here this is a mouse move so there's mouse move and there's mouse out and for me i only want one thing if we are mouse moving we're inside the canvas if we're mouse out we're outside the canvas and then we want to do something as well so the color will be, if we're in, this will be dark. And if we're out, it will be back to light. That's it. Very basic. 
nothing fancy here. So what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to say here if, and you can see here already the event, the event, and then the type of event, um, type here mouse move. So if you're going to say here arcs dot event dot type equals strict mouse move. If this is the case, what I would like to do is I want to change the color of hoisting or of the color. So now we're hoisting it, going it up there, and then it will load it here again. So then we're going to say here the color will be this solid color. And let's keep it like that. And then let's save that. Move. If I move here, look at that. The color is changing. However, if I'm out, nothing happens. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do here another if statement or else. Well, I guess an if. If mouse move, mouse out. Then I will go back to 0.2. Let's save that. Refresh. In, out, in, out. There we are. And now we have a nice almost button effect here in the canvas itself and that's it.